All right. So chapter three, um, we've gone into financial markets, how they came to be, uh, what they look like now, and a little bit, just a tiny bit uh, about what they may look like in the future. And that needs to be highlighted more and it will be. Um, chapter two was about the types of financial markets and some instruments that we find. Uh, there are literally tons of instruments out there uh, and wherever there's a buyer versus a seller, there's a market. So there's also tons of markets out there. Um, and it's also important to talk a little bit about the participants that we find in markets. So that's going to be you and me, but it's also the larger players in the game, big investors, banks, uh, a, a big uh, institutional investors, uh, you name it, like it's scattered with, you know, all different types of, uh, of players. So let's look at that a little bit in this uh, session, in this video. And in the end, as usual, I'm going to uh, offer some perspectives or who knows, you know, what happens somewhere uh, during, uh, I will give some perspectives. Um, yeah, so we are at chapter three. Let me go over here. Financial market participants, brokers, exchanges, and players. Um, generally speaking, when we talk about traditional finance, our way as uh, retail investors, that we'll, that's what we can call ourselves, unless you're uh, already a professional, but let's, I'm just going to assume that we are all a retail investor. So just the, the average person, generally our way of access to stock exchanges was via brokerages. Now there are sources of course, that are going to talk to you about this, um, or that will tell you about this, but important for us to know is that with cryptocurrency um, the entire brokerage versus exchange thing uh, changed a bit so generally we in traditional finance we had ourselves we wanted to invest we would go to a broker our uh, we would place our order saying like for example i want to buy amazon at this and this price and the broker would offer our uh, uh, order uh, onto the exchange or bring our order onto the exchange so we have access to the actual stock exchange via a broker. And this is that middleman. Uh, we, there's nothing wrong necessarily with middlemen. So the, in the previous video or the video before I said something about blockchain, for example, you know, um, taking out the middleman. Sometimes this is a good thing. Sometimes they provide a crucial role and, you know, they, they provide value. So again, neutral, right? Neutrality. Um, so, but with crypto, this changed a bit. With crypto exchanges, uh, we basically have, they provide the function of both the broker and the exchange. And there you can see like an advancement in efficiency, if you will. And generally, if you look at innovation, the way, the, the thing that we go for as humanity is an increase in efficiency. I will talk more about that at a later stage because that's a really interesting topic, again, to help you shape your, your framework, uh, your way of thinking. But just know for now that um, crypto exchanges fulfill the role of broker and exchange. So the way blockchain works is that you have a wallet address with your where you can have your own assets. So for example, in the case of Bitcoin, we have a Bitcoin wallet. We have our own Bitcoin there. We hold it there. So not with a bank or not with a brokerage, uh, but we have our wallet. Uh, and if we want to sell it, we can send our Bitcoin to an exchange uh, and sell it directly there. So we'll, it will change from uh, the wallet that we have privately to a wallet that they hold for us. Uh, what we of course have access to that wallet and on the exchange, we can actual, actually sell our Bitcoin for dollars or for euros or for another coin or whatever you want, uh, you want to do. Um, and then we could take our money again out of the exchange uh, and hold it uh, ourselves in some way or form. So more about how that works, we, we can talk about that at a later stage. Just know that there is this one step uh, taken out of this process. So that's just one important, highlight that I want to uh, I want to give for now. And of course, remember what I said previously is that we need to understand the the level the, or the, the, the field that we're playing uh, and we need to know where we go with our money in order to make certain investment decisions. So where can we trade something? Where can we place our investments, etc.? Do we use brokerages? Do we go directly to exchanges? The more we know about this, the better we understand this, uh, the smoother our operation within uh, markets. Okay, um, these PowerPoints, uh, I, I may not use them uh, later or I may expand them a little bit, but for now, let's just go to the browser. Let's go to the sources. Um, so this is a great article on, uh, uh, on the NerdWallet on what a brokerage is. 
Uh, just read through it. It's a crucial part of this, at least the stock market game. Uh, and this is one of those things where if you understand how it traditionally came to be, you understand the advancement that, for example, direct access to an exchange brings. And coming all the way back, and I will be repeating this, so this is not necessarily an investment thesis, but this is something that I think about that I like to hypothesize, that if something like blockchain, and as we go, you'll learn more, so hopefully you'll get to understand more what I'm talking about, um, blockchain could potentially you know, uh, provide us with this infrastructure that takes away the necessity of a brokerage firm. They may fulfill their roles in a different way, but that could be uh, an increase in efficiency making it more uh, making stock exchanges or or uh, you know maybe stock exchanges and crypto exchanges merge one day uh i do see that that as that as a possibility in the future um so a technological advancement could for example provide that and that for us investors or or traders as well is something interesting uh and again it highlights the importance of knowing uh, the way we did things in the past or the way we are doing things now and the way we could potentially be doing things in the future. So read through this, um, take your time. It's just a crucial cornerstone of financial markets. It's your way to access stock exchanges. That's what a uh, broker is. Do I have some examples of brokerages? Uh, I use interactive brokers. I'm not necessarily like uh, condoning them or like, you know, pay to shill or, uh, or whatever. Uh, I know that people use the Giro. Uh, so I can sort of stand behind that. I've done my research into how that platform works a little bit and I, I stand by how that works. I chose interactive brokers. It's a bit more advanced, but I don't use it all that much because uh, it's just an, a gateway for me to get like stock investing, but uh, I'm way more focused on the entire blockchain thing. But uh, so, so those two, uh, I would say like do your research. Uh, and, and see if you can, you know, like uh, which one is your, uh, you know, but there are tons out there. So interactive brokers one, the Giro, uh, you can do it via your bank, but generally the, those costs are way higher. So you need to account for costs. Um, and it, it requires some research on your end to, uh, to find a brokerage or a, a gateway to the stock exchange that makes sense for you. Um, other ways of trading stocks or derivatives um, or derivatives like that have stocks as their underlying, we will talk about at a later stage. For now, let's just keep it uh, keep it at this. But for those of you who are like, okay, you know, I know all this stuff. Bear with me. We are going deeper and deeper. Trust me, it's gonna be uh, you're gonna be fine. Um, so when you f uh, encounter brokerage firms, they like to promote their business with zero commission trading. Make no mistake, there are always fees to be paid. Otherwise, the people that are providing the platform simply cannot sustain their platform. So left or right, you are paying for your activity. You are paying for transactions. You are paying for uh, buying something. And most likely, you're also paying for selling something. And the way that they charge you for this um, varies per platform. And there are generally with zero commission brokers, as you can see in the source, there are uh, or there tend to be or there could be hidden costs and uh, we like the plain bagel as a channel anyway i think they or he the, the, they do a great job of explaining stuff uh to, you know to the average uh, investors like perhaps you and me and um, this is just something that we need to keep an eye on but like definitely as traders but and perhaps less so as like the investor that buys something uh right now and you know decides to sell five years five years later maybe then it's not that much of, a, of an issue but as you get more active or you know just work with more capital um, it really really is important to understand what you are paying exactly because if you are not aware of your costs basically at the end of the line your return on investment is going to be uh, lower it's as simple as that so we tr we want to get like as good a quality uh, a platform as we can and prefer you know ideally we pay very little fees to to use the platform to do our uh, to do our business so that's on that. And this is something that, for example, we could cover more in a, in a lecture or in the Discord to really dive deep into, uh, into how this works. Uh, fun example is um, for ex like our activity. Um, let me switch. I'm gonna talk to you like this. Let's switch it up. So uh, like a very successful and widely used platform for this uh, was Robinhood or is still Robinhood uh, and they got some uh they, they they got some heat under their uh feet uh, that's not an expression but it is now um for for example the way that they used to 
uh, make money or still make money i'm not entirely sure of that uh, if they change their activities is for example by selling data that customers were providing them on their platform so what do i mean with that um for example let's say like tesla stock was a very popular stock on that platform uh, like millions of people were buying it or selling it or trading it on the platform um but their activity was valuable data for the Robinhood platform and what they did is actually sell that data uh, or or give larger players access to that data and the way this works in practice is like say okay uh, you know the entire tdfa group uh we all have a Robinhood account tomorrow and then we start trading uh, amazon or whatever stock on that platform and let's say that we let's say um i don't know uh, let's say amazon and we all say like okay 100 dollars for amazon is a, i'm just making a price up right now uh, 100 dollars is a good place to buy amazon and we all place our orders right we send our orders to Robinhood saying like you know we want to buy um amazon at 100 dollars now that information is there on the exchange on Robinhood, and they basically had or have i'm just not sure about that bear, forgive me for that um but they would give larger players access to this data and they would basically the larger players would say ah look at that like, there's retail interest around 100 dollars uh which means that likely you know there's a potentiality that that, that price level is a good level uh, to be buying maybe if amazon went down from 120 to towards 100 maybe it's going to stop there. What are we going to do? Well, actually we're going to start buying at $101, right? And we are sort of like, we see price go towards $100. It touches $101. The big players buy, it runs up back to 105 and we end up sitting there like, wait a minute, you know, our entry, as we call it, didn't get triggered. We don't have Amazon stock. What do we do? Uh, and as we'll learn later in like uh, the topics of psychology and the way uh, that works, you know, there is a big likelihood that we end up buying 102, 103, 104, 105 dollars, at which point those larger players would be selling uh, their positions that they bought at 100 dollars, you know, right to the, uh, you know, not, not nothing suspecting uh, retail investors. So that's like, it's kind of sneaky, I guess, um, but that is something that we need to, you know, be aware of. And that's just, this game is full of those, uh, like I said, you know, it's like th this game is played by the smartest people on the planet, probably. Um, they dedicate a lot of resources into mastering the markets. And, you know, like uh, it, sometimes it happens in a gray area, sometimes uh, in a completely black area. But OK, that's, that's for another time. Um, anyway, we need to be aware of these sort of things, right? We need to really understand market dynamics and the players that are playing this game if we want to really succeed uh, successfully. This probably accounts more for active trading than you know just buying a stock and holding it, but I did want to give you that perspective nonetheless uh, when it comes to this uh, particular part. Okay, let's go back. Um, so that's it on uh, on fees. I'm not actually sure if uh, I don't remember if if he explains this a, a particular example on Robinhood, um, but yeah, uh, just just check it out and see what um see see what he says about the uh, the hidden costs um i've just i have a sort of like a, a moment of not remembering uh anyway so next up um market makers and just general uh participants read through this as well like i said one of the perspectives here or one of the important things to understand is that you 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 just need to understand the game is is the same as you you know you're like a football player you want to understand your opponent. You want to understand your co-players. You want to understand the rules of the game. You want to understand the, the dimensions of the field. You want to, you know, understand strategy. You want to understand all those things. It's it's not unlike sports. It's not unlike any uh, any profession that you want to excel at, I guess. But especially with financial markets, we just really need to understand what we are uh, getting ourselves into, right? Not to to sort of like heed a warning or to scare anybody. It's just the better you understand your the, the, the game you're playing, the more likely uh, it is that you actually are going to get good at it, right? It's just uh, a step in the, uh, in the journey. Another thing that um, we want to sort of just know about, uh, something that we not necessarily can control, but that is market regulation. So there can be at any time, uh, you know, changes in the way regulators look at markets. So cryptocurrencies, for example, they have been under a lot of fire for because there have been so many scams and so much money has been lost by the retail investor. The most recent example, I guess, is the the, uh, the FTX drama. 
Um, that sort of stuff makes like regulators such as the SEC, which is probably the largest or and most uh, looked at organ when it comes to regulation in the, in the world, uh, that makes them look at these markets to protect investors, right? That Well, that's at least what they say they are doing. Uh, we can get into a, a, a debate of whether they always do a good job, but that's beside the, uh, that's the, besides the point. Um, just understand that this is also a component of markets, and it's important to understand that they are there, what their role is, and what sort of influence uh, their decision-making has on asset prices, for example, right? So if we are invested in something, uh, something, I don't know, like uh, marijuana stocks was uh, like a big trend because in some countries it was legalized for medical purposes. Uh, that is something where regulation changes and it could have a positive, eff positive effect on asset prices. And that's just one example that popped into my head. But this is another thing that we need to uh, keep in the back of our minds. And for example, if you're interested in cryptocurrencies, if regulation changes to the you know, to a more favorable circumstances that could have a potential price impact for your assets. And the other way around is is probably even more important that if regulation changes against your, uh, the, you know, the assets that you're invested in, then you want to protect yourself from potential downside uh, when it comes to that, right? So important aspect as well, that we understand regulators play a very, very important role. And they are sort of like the referees that make sure that no files are committed uh, and when they are committed, that the player gets sent off the field, right? I, I'll, I'll let's stick with the football analogy for uh, for now. Um, okay, let's uh, keep going. Efficient market hypothesis. I'm going to let you read uh, this for yourself, but it states that share prices reflect all information, and consistent alpha generation is impossible. You need to understand what alpha is. But alpha is basically uh, is an edge on the market, so an advantage that you have over other market participants that make you. Uh, have asymmetric returns, so non, uh, yeah, asymmetric returns. How do you say that? So if if the general the S and P return is nine percent, then you want to get to a place where you make more than this nine percent per year, uh, nine percent per year, and those would be asymmetric returns. So they deviate from sort of like the mean from the standard, right? And this uh, hypothesis states that uh, because all information is always reflected in the current asset price, consistent, and this word is important here. Uh, alpha generation is impossible. Now, I don't like necessarily to think of anything as impossible. Uh, impossible is a very limiting word. But um, yeah, read through it because this is something, again, it helps you shape your thinking and it helps you think like, for example, okay, well, you know, if this hypothesis is sort of like true, you know, what, how much effort should I put into trying to consist, uh, trying to generate, you know, consistent alpha, right? Like that, that could be, um, so I do think it's possible to uh, to temporarily, I, like I, I do think it's possible to outperform the S&P very, very much so. I also do think it's possible to outperform the performance of Bitcoin, for example, but that requires a lot of time uh, and dedication. Uh, uh, and it is possible, but it's very hard. And that's why I'm not necessarily behind uh, personal uh, perspective here, behind this. But the key word is consistent. Consistent alpha generation is very, 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 very difficult. And what is alpha today may not be alpha or edge uh, tomorrow because markets are efficient. They will, uh, you know, uh, we, we will talk about mo this more uh, at a later stage. Okay, the advanced source, we call it advanced. Uh, it's just a conversation, but it's a three-part conversation. So it's, it is lengthy, but um, the thing that I want to get you, like, like this is our, no, not our first introduction maybe, but Lance Breitstein is one of those traders who, went from losing, 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 losing to trading, uh, I think eight figures and perhaps even more uh, and really making a lot of money with this in this game, uh, winning prizes for trading as well. And he has a very like honest and clear way of explaining what this game actually is. So we are switching back, like back and forth from uh, investing and trading, right? Um, and the two go hand in hand. So like you can see investing as sort of like long-term trading and trading as short-term investing, kind of, not really. But um, where was I going with this? Um, like he really promotes the story of a, a trader. So if you want to go in that direction, I haven't found a lot of more honest perspectives than, uh, than his. And he also, you know, there's plenty of interviews, but I, I like uh, the Chat with Traders channel. 
uh, and you can just learn a ton from uh, from this guy. Uh, and yeah, the, uh, you will find um, uh, Lance a little bit later in the curriculum as well. But it's just like listen to this. Also, if you, it is an advanced source, but I do recommend just to listen to it. I don't know, go for a walk or uh, in the train or wherever you're at, and um, you know, see what it's like to look in the head of an of somebody that actually trades a lot of money and actually consistently makes money with that, because that is very very hard. Uh, to achieve not impossible but uh, definitely hard uh, to uh, to achieve okay um, yeah there was one more slide and that says perspective so um, closing perspectives because this is the final chapter for uh, for the first week coming back we need to understand the game that we're playing so we we have a broad overview of financial markets i'm just going to repeat you've heard this before i know uh, we have a broad overview of financial markets we want to understand the types of financial markets that are there the types of assets that we find there so what is actually being traded on these markets uh, how can we trade them so by for example buying something spot and we will come back to this more extensively at a later stage buying something spot or via derivatives contracts um, and I will probably highlight this in the in the in the lecture by the way um, the, uh, via derivatives contracts and we want to understand sort of like our opponents the players in the field uh, how to get access to markets etc i hope this has been uh, these three chapters have given you a good overview or at least a basic introduction as to what this game uh, not what this game is about yet because that, that we'll learn a little bit later but the idea at least the sort of like the the the, the surroundings the, the the you know the, the the blueprint of financial markets of how it works and what we can expect as participants um, anything else to close this uh, to close this video? Um, yeah, no, it just uh, like we close with the Lance Breitstein uh, video. I just think it's important to get that perspective out uh, as well, like uh, investing versus trading. Next week is going to be all about investing. Uh, and I just want to get out there that yes, this program is called TDFA, Trading Digital and Financial Assets. The highlight is on trading. And the reason we did that is because uh, and I'm sorry, I will round up. I know this is another lengthy one, but uh, I hope it's in, uh, it's interesting nonetheless. Um, I like personally, some personal perspective here. Um, my portfolio performance has been, uh, you know, has been really quite good, but it has mainly been thanks to early investments, right? So starting in blockchain in 2016 and then making the decision to sort of like go all in in March 2017, um, that has just generated returns that I have not been able to sort of like, um, uh, how do you say that? To copy or to, or to achieve with actually active trading. So what I personally do is my main capital or like the largest portion of the capital is, is sort of invested or is not invested. And I switch that around. Sometimes, you know, I de-risk and I have more of the capital in USD or in euros. Uh, and I will probably trade with capital, say like one to 5% uh maximum and i do want to get that uh, that out there so why then is, do we call this program uh, trading digital and financial assets well because i've become a way better investor when i under as soon as i understood uh markets better as well so it's allowed like my the perform the the increase in performance uh was very visible after i understood understanding like trading concepts as well like short-term uh, trading so short-term price fluctuations that have told me something about how markets move uh, where where and how money flows and when for example it's time to just de-risk a little bit and just that knowledge or that experience is already has seen a drastic informants but a, a dr drastic increase in performance um but full 100 percent trading with capital uh, i'm not necessarily sure if it is for the few people that really really want to master the game uh, and i do think it's very very possible uh to become like to you know to make a lot of money with that don't don't get me wrong that's very possible um but to outperform long-term investing um and like you know managing your capital i'm not sure if that is doable for uh for the majority uh, of us so i just want to get that perspective out that there is that you need to keep into in mind that probably investing and this is why for example warren buffett is not really much of a trader he you know he just looks at value so in something he sees a business that has potential for growth uh, or they 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 have a large team uh, they place their bets and uh, very much like you know crops 
later down the line they may sell or take profits or even you know hold uh, hold the company so for example like and this is the final 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 perspective and then i'm gonna let you go uh, for this for this week um you know like if you were to make your analysis on amazon or apple or google or all those companies uh, back in the day and you would have had convictions like like for example looking at the team members etc and you will be like okay wow what they've got here is really something huge i want to understand the implications of how big this can actually get if you then place your bets you will you will, you will have had a performance that is just very very hard to outperform uh, with trading not impossible again but for the majority of us um, unless you want to go down that road to really really dedicate yourself to full-time trading and want to you know uh, get a, a, like a complete master of the game and be one of the uh, you know the, the best in the world then that is absolutely possible and you will probably outperform most people you will also probably outperform uh, most people that are investing um, so this trading and investing game is really a personal preference i would say uh, a, a little bit of experience but it's important to understand um and again i want you to think for yourself right so th this is the way i look at it uh, and it's for me it's also something to do with time i just don't have the time anymore right now to uh, to fully dedicate dedicate myself to uh, to trading even though i really would love to spend more time on it because it's i, I love it it's really like uh, it's it's really it's a great game um so yeah I, i've taken a, a little bit more of a passive approach right now um and that is just very very personal uh, and i'm also pro probably a bit older than uh, than you guys so uh, 36 now uh, and right now maybe it's a bit more time to you know uh, sit on the investments and let those uh, ride than you know uh, getting uh, more even more gray hair from uh, from uh, from trading this is probably this happened from trading like uh, I, I so what i did is like um this is getting way too lengthy okay i'm gonna round up anyway i spent a lot of time trading actively until i got consistently profitable because i i also did want to master the game uh, it's just like right now it's it's not you know uh i i can't manage it with uh, with time but uh who knows in the future anyway i will promise to try to keep these videos shorter but i hope that this you know has given some uh valuable perspective anyway so this is the first week questions again discord uh lectures and um yeah i hope you enjoyed it and next week is all about investing we'll talk about strategies we'll meet some famous investors and we'll go deeper 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 into the rabbit hole thank you so much and we'll see each other in the next video